This is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Thanks for watching. Every time that the person comes to sit, learn Torah, needs to prepare himself like our ancestors prepare themselves to receive the Torah from Mount Sinai. The Creator is renewing the Torah and bringing it back every day. The voice that we might not be able to hear, it's a voice of a bat call, it's a voice of an angel that comes out of heaven and teaching Torah every day. And every person must qualify, clean, cleanse, purify himself to receive the light of the Torah that is coming down to the world from heaven, from the mouth of Hashem, the mouth of the Creator, to His beloved ones, to the chosen ones, to those ones that are able to listen and to receive His will, His divine will. The challenge is to remember what were the tools that we had in those days that made us able to receive the Torah, that we were humble, that we loved each other, that we were united, that we were connected, that we had a righteous leader, that we all aimed to heaven, that all of our hearts were pure, that we were humble basically. As one person, with one heart, one soul, we felt it. That made us qualified, able to receive, to hear, to see the voices of heaven. Now, if we want to say that today, in our day, in our time, the Creator is not revealing Himself to us, even though that we know, that we learn that there is hastara, that the light of Hashem is hidden. If we think to ourselves that the Creator really hides His face from us, there must be a mistake here. It cannot be that a shepherd really going to leave his herd to go into the darkness between the lions and the wolves. There is no real way that a parent, a father, and such a heavenly and loving father will neglect his children in such an abusive and horrible way just to let them go to that horrible exile. It's not a possibility. It's not an option at all. And for that he sent certain messages, righteous people, holy books, certain situations in life that are opening our eyes once in a while to recognize his heavenly supervision, private supervision on our lives to see those sparks, those hints, that the Creator really never left us. That in reality He is with us exactly like He was in the earliest days, just that we, maybe, not really able to see that. Because our mind is distracted, because we have foreign thoughts, because we're not as pure as we were. But from His side, in reality, from side of truth, he is with us in 100% means that He has that ability to rescue you, to save you, to redeem you, to take you out from every situation if He wants to. But in His wisdom, He came to that understanding that it's better for us as for now to hold on in that darkness and not to see the whole picture and not to understand the whole process of our nation walking into the dark and staying for thousands of years over there in the exile, in the depths of exile, suffering, crying from horrible pain and then being redeemed. We cannot see that large, wide, complete picture. And we need to hold on to faith, to that emunah, that the faith is in the night and it is the divine commandment. It's the will of heaven that we won't give up on faith. Even though it's in the night, even though it's dark outside, even though we can't hardly remember, 
even though that we can't understand what's going on in reality in our lives like where am I like we're stuck we're praying and not being answered we're learning and our mind is not being cleaner we see that we see that we're going to the mikveh every day and we see that we're keeping Shabbat and we see that we're learning halachot and we see that we're trying to be observant and strict and to do wild things in Avodat Hashem, lighting candles to tzaddikim. We, we even, like for a fact, we even try to be breast lovers, like you can go lower than that, like it's crazy. <laughs> like everything that is needed, we did. Like we just went all the way with Hashem, but... In the end of the day, you see, they're doing one hour in Bodedut, they're calling Hashem, talking to Him in your own language, and opening your heart and crying, and not seeing the salvations. Once, we heard from our ancestors that an honest person, when he is coming with truth, when he will open his mouth and call Hashem from the bottom of his heart, for sure he will see wonders, he will see miracles. And we want to count on that. But we tried it also. And it didn't always work. <coughs> and it's not that we now dropped our faith considering to quit, not at all. We're looking for an advice that will work. We're looking for a way to save our lives from falling to despair, to sadness. We do love all of our beloved ones. We do want to push the herd forward. We do want to help our families, our communities. We do want to cooperate with Mashiach and bring so We want it. But we're lost. Why we're lost? We lost because we lost our shepherd. Now who is that shepherd? Okay, so let's give him a name. Let's call him. If he will appear, if he will come, if he will take the stage, we'll follow him. We can't recognize him. We have an issue. I'm going to bring the issue. Let's say Mashiach is coming. He's here. Let's say Mashiach is here. Let's say Mashiach is now one of us. Let's say that Mashiach just came through the door and entered, and now he wants to present himself to this public, wonderful public, an open-minded public with an open and, and willing heart to accept and to, and to... Now, okay, the only issue with this Mashiach that just came, that he is an 18 years old Yemenite person from Yavne. Okay, now he came with his white cloak and with his funny kippah, with his that they have over there in the Yemenite community. And now he's standing here, he's 18 years old, about Yemenite, about this height, standing like that, and telling you with his Yemenite, Ani HaMashiach, and I came to redeem you all, and I have this pure intention in my heart, and I'm not laughing right now. That's how he will be sound if he is the real Mashiach. Are you, be honest, able to accept him? No. Right? I'm sure, right. Sure. Why? Because he's 18 years old and different than you. Right? I'm telling you that if a <coughs> 70 years old Ashkenazi Hasid will come and hold the same position and will tell you, I am the Mashiach. And I came to redeem you all. You won't believe him. You won't buy it. But he's Ashkenazi. He's perfect for the job. He's 80 years old, long white beard, amazing side curls, black suit, wears like a penguin. Everything is perfect with him. Why can't you accept him? What's your problem? You have a problem. Not the Mashiach. The problem is not that we cannot recognize, because even if Mashiach, if I am Mashiach and I'm standing in front of you, you cannot recognize me. You don't know who Mashiach is, and I'll tell you something even weirder than all of what you heard until now. Maybe you are Mashiach. You don't know it. And that's your problem. Your problem is that you don't know who you are. And as long as you don't know who you are, you're not capable of recognizing other people because you don't know who you are, so how are you going to know who he is? We forgot who we really are. That's why we cannot recognize Mashiach. 
The true leader of our generation is a person. He's a human being. He is fantastic. He is holy. He is precious. He is godly. He is wise. He is sensitive. He is amazing. He is the blessed one. He is the one and only. But you can't see him. Why? Because you are still blind. Why we are still blind? Because we are still blind to recognize ourselves. Because you can see Mashiach, you can learn Torah, you can hear your rabbis, you can understand your wife, your soulmate, your friends, your children, only through who you are means that if you can't hear, you can't hear your rabbis, you can't hear your wife, you can't hear your children, you can't hear your own thoughts. You're not aware. Those pipes are blocked and they're sealed. You're deaf, so you cannot you hear. It? You cannot see. You cannot see certain things in life because you are blinded. We need to work on ourselves to start understanding what is our connection, who we really are and what is our mission on earth, who we are and what we've been sent to do in this place, in our lifetime, who we are and what is our mission. From a tree of apples, you will never see mandarins coming out, ever. There's no chance in the world that mandarins suddenly going to grow out of an apple tree. No way. Now, if you are a real Israeli soul that came out to this world from holy branches, of Israeli roots, so you will always be like your ancestors. But it's hard for you to recognize yourself because someone for thousands on thousands of years is talking negative Lashonara, bad words, bad things about you to you and about your beloved ones to them and making wars and disagreements and dividing you from who you are and from your friends, from who they really are. We are the most precious, beautiful, amazing, sensitive, godly, precious souls that ever been created. Now it's hard for you to recognize it because you're waking up late, because you're not always honest, because you failed so many times, because you lied, because you cheated, because you're lazy, because you're smoking, because you are distracted, you're watching movies, I don't know, all those things and more. That's why for you it's hard today to recognize that holy soul portion of heaven that you are. It's hard for you to recognize because you think that those failures that you failed in took you away from who you are. So today you're going to think to yourself, oh, I'm a sinner, oh no, I'm lazy, oh no, I'm fat, I'm skinny, I'm ugly, I'm stupid, I don't remember, I'm a failure, I'm lousy, I'm horrible, and on and on and on and on. You have your lists, you know them. But in reality, all those things that we just mentioned and more are only the husks. They are the coverings. They are the scars. They're the wounds of your physical suit, of your body. They are the result of the darkness that is surrounding you and attacking you as a precious soul for thousands of years in different lifetimes as well. The evil inclination, that snake, he dressed us with a certain physical body that is impure. When the man and his wife, the first man, Adam and Eve, they sinned, in that moment they've been punished. They've been punished 
to be downgraded spiritually into a physical body. That physical body is a body that is contaminated with leprosy. The Zohar Kadosh is explaining the verse that Hashem told Moses, Shal na'alecha me'al raglecha, take off your sandals, your shoes. The Zohar Kadosh is saying that Hashem said to Moses, I need to remove your impure body, your contaminated covering, outfit, that is contaminated by the leprosy of the snake. Moses was 80, 80 years old, went out of Egypt when he was 20. For 60 years he was tearing the sky for pieces to pieces, screaming and crying and begging and praying. He was in the longest Hidbodedut ever, only with Hashem, totally clean, totally pure, in the highest level that ever been reached before. When he saw the Creator in that amazing moment of the burning bush, standing in front of the Creator, and then the Creator tells him, if you want to jump to the next level, if you want to continue with me to receive the ability to see me in a deeper way, you must get rid of your contaminated body. Even Moses that born circumcised, he was pure from birth. His body was shining, was illuminating the room when he came down to the world. Even him, he was not pure until the Creator took away and replaced his body. Yeshua ben Nun enjoyed the same privilege. Hashem replaced his physical body with a physical, spiritual body from heaven. A heavenly body. As long as we are still in our physical body, we are impure. No mikveh in the world can purify you from tumat anachash, from the contamination of the snake. No mikveh, and not even before dawn, and not even if you go gonna go to the same mikveh three thousand times, three thousand years, it won't save you. Only when the Creator Himself will decide to take away that leprosy, to remove that contamination from you, you will be healed. From what? From the effects of that impurity. From the negative thoughts. From the war of the Yetzer, of the evil inclination against you, that is fighting day and night on one thing. To erase your true identity in your own mind. To destroy your self-esteem that you will forget who you are and what your mission is. Because if you're going to remember who you are and you're going to understand how blessed and wealthy you are and who is your Father in Heaven, the Zohar Kadosh is saying that you will chase after Him like lions that don't know what fear means that they never go tired, that they're chasing after their goal with no end. It's the strongest and most brave animal in the forest. No one can deal with it. It's the king of all animals. And you, Gur Arye Yehuda, that baby lion cub, you're exactly like your parents. But in our generation, our parents are also lost their memory, and they also don't really remember who they are. They still remember they need to open books, they still remember they should pray, they still remember some, but they don't remember who they really are. Because for thousands of years that snake is working hard to destroy our inner connection with the Creator. To break our real inner source of life, inner source of power that can heal a person with a word, that can open the sea to 12 lanes, to bring down food from heaven, because our true potential is to be exactly in the same level like our ancestors. 
that your candles will be lit from one Shabbos to the next. Thank you so much. That the bread that you're making will stay warm for a whole week. That everything that you eat will be eaten in purity. That your financials will be blessed and that everything you do will go on track. That's your true potential, our true potential. And we cannot recognize that yet. Why? Because we still listen to the negative words of our evil incarnation, of our Yetzirah, that is destroying us from within and attacking us on daily basis. Every moment he's coming against you to tell you how disgusting and horrible and failure you are. And like that he is arguing and criticizing and fighting and battling with you on every situation. For an example, I promise to you that when you finish learning Gemara, what's the mistake in that? I don't know. But when you finish learning Gemara, you feel horrible. When you finish davening and praying Shemona Esre, you feel horrible. When you finish your fast in Yom Kippur and they told you already that only the fact that you believe that that day is purifying you and erasing all your sins, the day itself is causing the purification. Nothing that you will do will change or, or add. It's the day itself that is purifying you. In the end of the fast, you're saying to yourself, I didn't fast properly. In the end of Shabbat, I didn't keep Shabbat like I was supposed to. Always chasing yourself, always blaming yourself, always hating yourself, always disrespecting yourself. You're cleaning the house, it's not clean enough. You're cooking for Shabbat, the food is not tasty enough. You bought new things to the house, but what I'm gonna do with the rest? It never ends. Why it never ends? Because the Yetzer Ara is the strongest angel of them all. Rab Mordechai Shar'abi alav shalom said that he is the largest angel in heaven. He's got the biggest responsibility. He's supposed to prevent people from disrespecting the Creator. So everyone that is not worthy to come closer to heaven, the evil inclination is rejecting him. So now what you gonna do? Oh, so if I'm being rejected, so it means I'm not worthy. The test is if you're gonna give up on the truth or not. If you're not gonna give up, it means that you are worthy. Only if you never gonna back off, never surrender. The Zohar Kadosh is asking, when is the war finished? Who is the one that conquers, that wins the war? And the Zohar Kadosh is answering, the one that holds his weapon in his hand. That's the answer. So, we understand two people fighting with their swords. The one that died fell on the ground. The second one won and he's holding the weapon in his hand. So he's the one that won. The Zohar Kadosh doesn't accept that explanation. And he's asking another thing. A person that wants the war, that win the war, he doesn't need the weapon. He can drop his weapon. He won the war. If you hold the weapon, mean you still have enemies. How can you say that the person that is holding the weapon, the sword in his hand, he is the winner? The Zohar Kadosh is answering, don't worry, you're right, but you should know that the war, the Zohar Kadosh is answering, never ends. And as long as you're holding your weapon, it means that you're winning. The students of Rabbi Nachman and Mibreslev, they asked him, until when the Yetzara gonna knock on our minds, gonna fight with us? Rabbi Nachman of Breslev answered, until the second shovel of earth after your burial. When you're underground, in the second shovel, the Yetzara gonna stop attacking you. Not in the funeral, not when you passed away, in the second shovel, 
it can take a few days. Today they have refrigerators and everything. You can Jesus. wait a whole week. And the Yetzirah will keep on kicking and fighting like a crazy person. Never gives up. So if you see that your enemy is attacking you, not only on your crimes, he makes your mitzvot, your great deeds, your amazing actions to look in your eyes as horrible crimes. I remember myself once, I was a crazy breast level. Once. Today, I'm like, I'm normal. Now I'm clean. 100%. But then, 10 years ago, I was a crazy breast level meshuga, like with, with certifications, how do you say that? With, with the stamps with and all. What? With a diploma. With a diploma, with all the evidence, 100%. I'm telling you. And one day I decided, I heard an advice, an amazing advice. You should go to the field and do six hours it would do it. Heard that advice? Fantastic advice. It's written on Moses that Moses was late in six hours. When he was supposed to come and deliver the holy tablets, he was late. Like all the Israelis, he was late. Six hours delay. To fix that, you should go to the field and do six hours in Wadadut. It's a heavenly experience. Go do that. And then I heard another advice. Even though I started, I went and for many, many days and times in my life, I did six hours in Wadadut. I don't know if I can count the number of times I did six hours. One day I heard a higher advice even that in the three days of Purim, for sure in each and every one of those days, the day are the highest days of the year. Even Yom Kippur is only like Yom Purim. It's like Kep Purim, it's not Purim. Purim is higher. In Purim, whatever you ask, you receive. All your prayers will be answered. In Purim, for sure. So in days of Purim, three days you have of Purim. You have the Tanit Esther, and then you have Purim, and then you have Shushan Purim. Three days of Purim. You must do three times six hours during Purim. Now, I had a problem. I was married, and I had children. It's an issue when you want to be a breast level chassid. It's a problem. And I didn't know how to deal with it. Because I needed 18 hours during Purim, and it's a problem. But I worked hard lying to my wife and making up all the needed excuses, everything. And it by the book, like the rabbi tells us, no worries. And I convinced my wife to give me those 18 hours free, only for me and Hashem. And I went. And I made 18 hours hitbodedut in a row. Because I couldn't divide them to six. Because in the beginning I had an issue. And in the end I had an issue. And I found a space of 18 hours that I could dedicate those 18 hours only to Hashem. And I did it. And I'll tell you the truth. When I came out of the field after 18 hours, I felt like I just finished destroying the world in the worst way that you can imagine. <laughs> I felt like I corrupted the world and like I felt like the most disgusting, slimy creation ever been invented in the most weakest mind of the developers of our creation. I felt Horrific. I felt the worst. And then I asked myself, how in the world it can be that you were busy only in mitzvah? You were only praying. You really dedicated from your place with your mindset. You aimed your heart truly only to heaven. How in the world it can be that the results are so horrible. So horrible. I felt the worst. And then I realized that it really cannot be. It cannot be the reality. Just. 
that thieves that are coming to steal, they want to steal precious things. They don't want to steal copper or iron or earth or sand. They want to steal gold, diamonds, precious stones with value. The evil inclination, nefesh yekarat atzud, precious soul, it is hunting. Because we are precious, because we are valuable and godly, we have so many enemies. And our enemies are not the Ishmaelim or the Edomim or the Palestinians or the Christians or that community or that community. You have your enemies installed inside your mind. Breaking you to pieces from within. And your wife, she has the same inner enemy inside of her. And your children, they have the same enemy. Talking to them from within, you're horrible. You're disgusting. You don't have a chance. You're not going to make it. Look at you. You're lousy. You're ugly. You're stupid. You're you are nothing. And destroying your self-esteem on daily basis, every moment attacking you. Not on your sins. Your sins are a joke. On your mitzvot. On your great amazing actions. Things that no one will argue that are great. And you are still arguing. Who are you? It's not you. You are not arguing. The fact is that you went to learn. The fact is that you tried to pray. The fact is that you went to mikveh. The fact is that you sent your children to the cheder, to the Talmud Torah. The fact is that you do want to do good. But you have negative thoughts. Negative thoughts are your evil inclination. Pure thoughts of hope. Pure thoughts of confidence, of goodwill, of holy desire to succeed, to achieve, to grow, to listen, to understand, to accept, to humble yourself and to learn. Those are the voice of your soul. You need to learn who you are. You need to recognize the good from the bad. You need to recognize the godly soul that lives and trapped inside your vehicle, your physical body. And to recognize who you really are, that's the mission of your life. And you, and you when you are going to recognize who you truly are, you will have the ability to recognize Mashiach as well. You will understand how precious your soulmate is. How amazing your children are. How beautiful your neighbors. How amazing and fantastic that righteous person is. You will suddenly receive those godly eyes of King David that was able to be tov enayin ve tov roi. That he had good eyes. And he saw only the good in people. When you will buy that tool of finding the good <coughs> inside of yourself. Those are not good points that you need to find. It's the portion of heaven that is treasured inside of you. You have a portion of heaven. Chelek Eloka. Eloka is Hashem. It's God. It's godly light that been given to you to shine from within. And that is the light of good that you should share with the world. That you should advertise. That you should shine and illuminate. What is that light? Those are your talents. That's your sensitivity. It's your sense of humor. It's your ability to recognize one thing from the rest. It's the tools that have been given to you from heaven that you today... Find them hard to respect, that you don't appreciate yourself, that you're not finding yourself attractive or wise or blessed, but you are. And one person is gifted in certain things and another is blessed with another. And you should listen to the inner voice of Hashem. Because how you look and what people think about you is not important at all in the godly plan. 
Do you know how Abram looked like? You know exactly what was the height and if Sarah was skinny or fat? No, you don't know. Why you don't know? Because it's not important. That's why the Torah is not telling you. If Esther Malka, she was tall or she was low. If Rachel Imenu, she was thick or she was skinny, thin. If she was blonde or brunette, it's not important. So why is it important when you look at the mirror? Do you know if Abram was strong in math? Do you know if Jacob's memory was perfect? Do you know if he remembered his wife's birthday? You don't know. You don't know those things. You know why? Because every single one of those righteous ones had their lackeys. And the Torah is revealing that to us. Abram been punished on his sins, on his mistakes. Jacob, Isaac, Moses, the women, the holy righteous mothers, they were all been judged by heaven on their mistakes. When they mistaked, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Creator, opened their eyes and rebuked them, a rebuke that based on love. Because at Asher Yoav Hashem Yochiach, the Creator rebukes the one that He loves. So you should not let those rebukes reject you. That's the whole thing. The rebukes that are attacking you are the heavenly voice that is coming to open your eyes to teach you how to improve yourself. But don't fall into that rebuke and believe it all the way that it's coming to fix you and to judge you. Just remember always that it's coming from the hands of that loving Father that loves us in unconditional love. And He's hinting us for us to learn. And He's hugging us and petting us and supporting us and sending the right messengers to us to help us to climb and to grow and to achieve and to succeed and to learn and to develop. And that's His divine will that we will never surrender, that we will never give up. On what? On Him. And He sent Himself to live inside of us. He lives inside of you. Even when you are in the most contaminated places, even when you are impure, He is still with you. And the way to connect yourself to Him is with truth. Because Hashem Karov Lechol Korav, Lechol Asher Ikreu Be'emet. He's close to everyone that will call him with truth. To call him with truth is to be honest when you call him. It's to tell him I'm weak. It's to tell him I don't know what to do. It's to be honest and to say I feel like I lost my way. It's not to pretend or to act and to show something that you're not holding. It's to tell him, listen, I'm trying. I'm doing my best, I'm working so hard, and I'm finding it hard to reach. Please, guide me in your path of truth. Open my eyes to recognize your real will, and not to follow the herd, and not to follow people. To follow you, Hashem, I want. To be honest with your search. To be honest with your requests. When you will pray like that, you will recognize suddenly how great you are, how honest and innocent you are, how simple are your requests, what are you asking for? Simple quiet that will allow you to keep on functioning by the way of true, pure Judaism, to be observant, to keep the Ra'al Mitzvot. Not to be bothered by the landlord, and not to be bothered by the government, and not to be bothered yeah, with right. no parking spots, and you have to drive for half an hour in circles, and in the end someone else needs to park your car, because there is no parking in Williamsburg. What are we asking for? A parking spot? It's okay to ask. A clean and decent house that will be large enough for the numbers of our family members. It's okay to ask. You're not asking for too much. 
if you don't want a landlord that lives in the next floor and knocking on your ceiling from the morning till the night. And his kids never sleep at night as well. It's okay to ask for those simple requests. We're not doing anything wrong when we're being honest with Hashem. We must stop judging and criticizing ourselves and to try to work on that as hard as we can to recognize our true, true pure intentions, who we really are, and to remember that our negative thoughts, our sadnesses, our depressions, our angers are the negative thoughts of our Yetzirah. It's not you who failed. It's the failure of your body. And your pure soul is stuck in that impure body. <coughs> and that's your mission. Not to forget your godly soul, even if it's covered with earth and ashes and smoke, wounds and scars that are results of the exile. You are not scarred. You're not filthy and disgusting. You are a precious godly soul. That's who you are. You're a good soul. You and the Torah and Hashem are one. Chada Machta, one unit. All of Am Yisrael, the ones that are Jewish and also the lost tribes that have not been found yet, by the way, they're also Am Yisrael. And you cannot recognize them at all. No shape and no figure. Cannot recognize them at all. They can be Mexicans, they can be Spanish, they can be Indonesians, they can be Chinese. You don't know them. They are the children of God, Asher, Naftali, Zvulun, scary souls. Holy souls, we cannot imagine their godliness, how beautiful they are. You cannot imagine how fantastic are the children of Asher. You can never understand the glory of the children of Shimon. And I tell you, they live in Pakistan and in Afghanistan and in Egypt and India and Thailand. And you can't see them at all. They're so hidden. In the depths of exiles, under the swamps of despair, you cannot see a one bright light over there. It's all dark, but they are there like diamonds and gold underground. And when we'll have the knowledge how to dig and how to help them out, you will see hundreds of millions of those holy tribes reunited with us under the kingship of heaven in a way that cannot be described. Because the last redemption will be greater than the redemptions that we experienced. It will be the delivery of our souls to a higher level than the ancient heaven. It will be higher than heaven that is described in the Bible. It will be higher than that level. There will be a widely, wide world peace. All the animals will live in peace. All the nations will live in peace. Everyone will be friends with each other. There will be no death, no weaknesses, no illnesses, no anger. No sadnesses, no darkness, no death. Everything will bloom and rise and shine. It's reality. It haven't took place yet, but it's the end of our journey. And it's about to come. The evidence for that is me and you. Because I'm a Baal Tshuva. I woke up from complete darkness. It's a whole other, other story. But it was from complete darkness. Complete darkness. Only because of his mercy. Only because he commanded some angels to take care of that poor lost, completely lost soul that was completely lost. Was not eating kosher, was not keeping Shabbat, was not learning Torah, was not putting tefillin, was not doing anything. And I did a lot of other things at the same time. 
and the Creator took me out of that darkness, not because of my pure intentions or my holiness or the 18 hours that I was doing. It was not in the same days. In those days I was clubbing, I was dancing, I was smoking, I was drinking, I was taking drugs, I was violating every single holiday that I could, every halakha. I would make fun out of religious people. I couldn't care less about Torah. I was eating in Yom Kippur. I was doing everything that I wanted. I never learned differently. I was totally blind. And the Creator, He decided to take me out of that place and to shine upon me and to wake me up to recognize that I'm not just a regular lost soul that I have my good intentions, that I am good, that I do belong somewhere, that I have roots, and that I'm not cut from reality like an individual lost animal in the forest. He woke me up to realize that I am who that I am. And then I found him after I found myself a little bit. When you find yourself, you can find your creator. Before you realize you are a creation and your nature is revealed to you, you can never understand that you have a creator that made you to be who you are. First of all, you must find yourself. And then, through that true self of yours, you'll find from within an inner connection in Pnimiyot to your Creator, to our Creator, to the Master of our Universe and all the universes around, the One and Only, the Heavenly One that lives inside of us. Thank you very much. Hazakul Baruch and be blessed. Thank you. We hope you enjoy this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.